color grading photography theory. It's not really theory, I'm just saying that because YouTube thinks it's good SEO to use those exact keywords. It's actually color grading, period. It includes car photography, that's what I do. So I wanted to just make that clear that this is not just for cars, it's for any type of color photography. And uh, this came as a request from a poll that I made in my Facebook car photography group where overwhelmingly a lot of people just wanted to learn more about color grading. If you're interested in joining, uh, let me know down below and I'll send you some sort of a link so that uh, you can access it. Just a bit of housekeeping stuff to get out of the way. If you like this video and find it interesting and want to see more, please subscribe. Just a little side note about this channel. It's a bit different from all the other photography channels out there on YouTube. Uh, I'm making it deliberate that way because I find all the other channels are heavily skewed towards techniques and equipment. I think there's enough talk about that on YouTube, but I believe there's so much more about photography than just those things. So I'm uh, trying to find some sort of a balance on YouTube, achieve some sort of a, a anti-skew back to a more balanced discussion about photography. So my approach is more about uh, basically improving photography overall, your photography overall, uh, by not specifying and focusing so much on the gear and the lighting and the equipment and all those things, which do matter, but they may not matter as much as you think. So case in point, this video is about the why color grading as opposed to the how-tos out there. If you want to learn how to, there are a gazillion YouTube videos showing you how, from hue and saturation to masking to some sort of basically select and adjust method. And that's very common, but you all know that already and because it's out there already. So what hasn't been talked about more is the why and why would you color grade? What purpose is the color grading? Uh, what can you achieve with different colors? So let's talk about that. I came to realize that there really is only one main concept that you have to understand. And if you can get this, then all of your color theory and applications, as well as a whole bunch of other things, automatically fall into place and your whole workflow improves all at the same time. So it's a pretty big deal. It's only one thing. And that is the main message that I wanted to talk to you about today. That one thing, planet. So you may be wondering, how does planning make any sense with color grading? Well, it makes a lot of sense. In fact, in addition to color grading, all the other stuff that you deal with in a photo shoot comes together much better when it's well planned. So I'm gonna myth bust one concept, and that is color grading starts when you sit in front of a computer. I don't believe that is the case at all. I think if you only start to consider color after your photo shoot is done and wrapped and you're sitting in front of your computer after you've imported all the files, sometimes you're actually too late. So let's use an example. Say you wanna take a photograph of me right now. To give you a background, I have a daylight balanced light on top of my camera. I have another one here that's also daylight balanced and a third one behind me lighting the background that's also daylight balanced. Say if you take a photo of me, everything's neutralized, the lights are all daylight balanced and you take a photo and you go into post-production and you start color grading and you decided that this light on top of the camera, you want that to be warmer so that uh, I look a bit warmer on my skin tones. You can probably do that with a brush and some masking, but you really have no idea where this light is hitting me blends into this light hitting me. And you have to kind of guess where that transition is gonna be. It's gonna be somewhere around here, but you really don't know because both are daylight balanced and they blend into each other seamlessly. So what can you do in post-production to make only this light hitting me to be a bit warmer? You can't really do that. The best you can do is guess. And that's where things start to fall apart in post-production if you grade too late. So now I've switched that light 
because it's an LED panel that's bicolor, to full tungsten, 3200K. Now you can probably see that it's warmer over here, yet this light over here is still daylight balanced and you can start to see the difference and you know exactly where that transition is gonna be. It's not just a straight line, of course, because I have a nose, you know, I have undulations on my face where the light's going to change in shape as it goes across the texture of my face. So these are good examples of why doing this ahead of time when you're shooting is better than doing it in post-production because in post it's too late and you're just guessing at that point. So that's a good example of why planning ahead for color grading works much better in your workflow. But it's not just color grading, it's tonal grading as well, which is the other half of the grading equation when you talk about uh, post-production. Color is only one component of it. Tone is the other one. I've worked with a lot of different retouchers and every single retoucher that I work with, whether it's a big company or a single individual, the procedure, the workflow is always the same step by step. And the very first step in any workflow for any new project that I work with them is to set the mood of the images. So what we usually do is if we're working with a set of images, say the project is six images for example, the very first step is that we pick one of the images that best represents all the colors and all the tones that are seen in all six images. And we use that as the guinea pig or the reference image. And we work on that to create a mood. And that mood is determined by tones and colors. It's not just colors alone, it's tones and colors. By definition, tones just means brightness values, darkness values, contrast, and colors means color. Those things combined together creates your mood. So when I usually shoot a car, I think about the color in just one of two ways. Uh, number one, the car can blend in with the existing environment or it could stand out. That's really the only two choices. And if you look at all the images out there, it, it, they fall into one of those two categories. It either blends in with the environment or stands out. And we're excluding studio photography, of course, because studio is just all uh, creating everything from a blank sheet of paper. We're talking about only shooting on location. So let's talk about some examples of blending in versus some examples of standing out uh, with reference to the color, okay? I'm going to use Behance.net to show you all the reference work, and including my own because I'm also on this website. It's a great one-stop website to showcase a bunch of different work from a bunch of different artists, including graphic designers, photographers, what have you. But let's recap first on what we talked about, which was the blending in versus uh, sticking out for the car, and also talk about the colors of choice to use to describe certain emotions. Let's talk about the second part first, about the colors and emotions. I want to show this to you, which is called the emotions of color, and to give you a kind of a quick guide of which colors uh, symbolize what types of emotions out there. So if you look at uh, green, for example, here in this case is nature and youth. Um, cyan is calm, cold fantasy, but blue can be used for horror. Uh, moving across, it's uh, enthusiasm and energy for orange, angry, passion, love for red, and charming and feminine for pink. Of course, there's a few other colors in between as well, but uh, there'll probably maybe a blend of certain types of emotions as well. So when I mean, you keep that in mind, and you go back to uh, the first point, which is basically choosing whether do you want your car to stand out or to blend in with your environment, then you have a pretty good idea once you add those two things together about the color choices of your entire palette for your, for your shoot. Um, in terms of blending in or sticking out, I think a lot of times the answer is already presented to you uh, before you need to decide. It really depends on the color of the car. And most often, you only have one choice. The car is given to you 
with a color and that you're stuck with that one color. And most of the time, the client, whether it's a private client or a commercial client or even a shooting a friend's car, it will be one color and you will be locked into shooting that color. So a lot of the other subsequent choices you make will be based on that one color of the car. Uh, from a commercial point of view, the car colors are predetermined by the manufacturer as a launch color. If there's a new car that came out, like this um, Elva for the McLaren, they chose this blue as their launch color. So Simon, who shot it, uh, naturally decided that, oh, I, wanna, I want this to blend in with the environment. And of course, he shot it in the studio so he could make the studio any color that he wanted. But um, if you looked at another shot, say, down here um, of the Volvo, for example, um, that was the choice of the car launch color. Uh, and um, maybe that's why they chose this type of color palette. So we can go into specific uh, photographers work starting with a blending of some sort whether this launch color was decided to be a silver or gray and they have to work with this color so they decided that uh, they would choose an entire palette of colors that will be matching so the car blends in yeah, this was the choice to blend uh, but on top of that they picked one color which is the warm and the yellow uh, to act as a consistent string that ties all the images together. Uh, so apart from the grays that you see of the car and also of the road and also in a very pale sky, which is barely blue, almost gray, done intentionally, by the way, um, they added a blast of uh, warmth into the images. So you can see that yellow as a line in this shot and in here, another blast and also the yellow of the curb it's these little elements that tie the entire series of images together here in the building and the curb here also in the building even though the car is a car interior shot again and again all right so that's one good example of using a, a specific color element to tie uh, an entire series or set of images together Another example is here, also blending in, uh, but a disclaimer for this one, I know this was done in CG, so the car could have been any color, but still, the client decides that this is the color that they wanted to, and they have to choose locations and also talent to match that color uh, so because everything's blending in with each other. So it's, I don't think it's a coincidence that they decide to shoot in uh, overcast, um, weather conditions where there's no direct sun so that uh, sh basically you're shooting in shadows and um, when you're shooting in shadows everything has a kind of a, a slight blueness to it um, in this case they actually tweaked it more towards cyan and green but uh, if you look at the details for example of what uh, the talent is wearing which is pretty dark tones but also with a bit of blue into it it's uh, also matching with the the wall in the background and also to the ground. So everything kind of just matches. Uh, in this case, um, you could, if you see a red building in the background, it's desaturated enough so it doesn't stick out because everything is very subtle in, in terms of color here. Um, if you go across, even with this shot, every all the colors are desaturated so that the car can actually stand out a little bit more. Um, even though the car blends into the background, I don't mean it's a complete blend because it will just disappear. The, the tonal grading uh, of the car itself is always kept at a bit higher contrast than the rest of the environment. So the higher contrast makes it pop a little bit more. And um, if you look at the saturation of the colors, it's a little bit more saturated than the other colors in the background. So that also helps make the car pop a little bit more. But again, when you're looking at the colors, you, again, you see what he's wearing is uh, complements everything. Uh, a beige or brown jacket or coat will match the kind of earthy tones around him. And the dark pants and the ground having a very similar color palette is also, I think, intentional. Again, here's a great example of the contrast and the color 
of the car just being a little bit higher than the rest of the image so that the car kind of does stand out a little bit okay uh, in this image it's one of these situations where the launch color of the car is a bright orange or yellow can't really tell I think it's orange uh, this one was shot by and if I pronounce this correctly Uwe Dutmann in Germany uh, for Volkswagen I think the W's are pronounced V's in German so again looking at the color palette it is a strong car color very bold and in this case well they decided to make it stand out and along with the theme that they have to market this car to a certain crowd and in this case this car was is quite obvious that they want the buyer to be uh, from the the younger generation maybe first-time buyers but also urban cool uh, hip trendy that type of feeling so they added a lot of colors uh, in addition to the car color so this uh, <clears throat> Uh, this is a great example of what I talked about planning your colors earlier because if you look at the blue light hitting the ground this was actual from the light done they added a gel to the light to make it this way and another orange gel over this light on this side uh, because then you can actually see the difference in the transitions between the orange to the blue same goes for the background with the blue uh, patch here and then another orange patch here, which is probably, this orange is probably from the same light here. And this blue is always probably from the same light in the front. But you can't do this in post-production because if you shot everything with white daylight, you can't see where the transition happens because it will be daylight here and daylight here. But uh, if you did it in camera and also plan for it prior to shooting, you can actually see the difference and it's much more realistic when you do it this way than doing it in post. Again, that blue light on the door versus a more neutral light here can only be done in camera and that's consistent across the board. Here, it was just like shooting my face in, when I was in front of the camera. Um, if you had a light like this and another light on this side, blue versus red, very hard, almost impossible to do in post. So you have to shoot it like that. And that's why the planning again is so important. So you can see the color consistency right across the board. Bold, punchy, saturated colors. Mainly it's a, it's a blue versus orange or teal and orange type of uh, approach. Here is another example of a very strong and bold car color. So if Renault says, this is the car color we're gonna give you, you know, make it work. So you d you would decide maybe I'll shoot it in a background that's just very plain and gray, even though it was toned to be a bit cyan and green, you know that uh, in essence, this was just a pretty gray environment and the car color just speaks for itself. But if you can maintain the, cons the consistency across the set of images, um, then you can really see the message that they were trying to show. Uh, this set was the shot by Patrick Curtet. Uh, same goes for uh, this set here of the G70 for Genesis. And uh, this was done by Amir Haverick, who was a, also a really good car shooter. And lastly, um, Let's talk about this one before you get to mine. Um, this is quite an interesting one because it doesn't exactly stand out and it doesn't exactly blend in. I think the photographer here, who is actually a fashion photographer, uh, he's not that technically inclined for shooting cars, but I think he was chosen for this job because he can impart a lot of his uh, experience shooting fashion and style uh, to shoot it with a little bit of a twist. So here I would say that he's, at first glance, um, offsetting the smoothness of the, the sheen in the, in the bodywork of the car against a very rugged and rocky background. I think you see a very big contrast there. Very smooth, very rough. And then uh, in terms of the color choice, this one's a tough one because the red, it doesn't exactly 
stand out very much because it's a dark red, uh, but it doesn't exactly blend in obviously with the rest of the background. Uh, so you can't really choose the, the car color because you can't really change the car color. No one would want that. So the only option you have is to change the background location color and they've decided to use a very monotone um, cyan and green which is in technical sense the opposite of red red and green are kind of opposites uh, but it's done subtly because the saturation isn't very high the contrast is very high but the saturation isn't if you compare this to the blue car that they shot, you can tell that this was more, much more of a blend. The blue, the blue doesn't stand out that much compared to the red. Uh, so this is more of a classic blend. But when you put the two together, you see something else. Now you kind of notice that the entire background, the house, the sky, everything, saturation is lower. And you're letting the colors of the cars pop out. So they both cars, the colors pop out, I, th I would say, equally. But the talent and the background, that color saturation is lower. And if you throw in the, the emotions now, then you've got some uh, fiery red versus the coolness of blue. Uh, kind of, they're kind of opposing uh, forces here, but you're adding the two together. And if you look at the overall color balance, uh, it's pretty cyan and green, and that's pretty calming if you go by that same chart that we looked at earlier. So that was looking at other people's work, I can, and so far I can only speculate what they chose to do. But here, in this case, is my own work that I just wanted to huh, shamelessly plug them. But no, uh, I can give you a much more detailed explanation because I, I, I made these images, and I can tell you exactly what went behind the thought process. So in this case, the car is an A7 by Audi. And just to give you a little bit of a background, the A6 and the A7 are very technically similar cars. The only difference is that the A7 has a sloping sportback uh, rear end, where the A6 is just a regular sedan with a trunk or a boot, however you want to call it. Very much similar cars, technically speaking. But from a marketing perspective, they decided that they go towards very different types of uh, customers. The A6 is more of the executive saloon or business sedan, similar to like a, a E-Class uh, Mercedes or a 5 Series BMW, uh, that type. But the A7, on the other hand, even though it's technically and mechanically very similar to the A6, is more geared towards uh, the people who are appreciative of art, design, fashion, style, that kind of crowd. Uh, and uh, that's why we decided to go with this art, you know, artistic approach for shooting this car, where the car was presented to us as gold, no choice with that. So we're like, okay, well, let's use it to our advantage instead of like fighting it. And we're like, if it's gold car and you want to mix in style and fashion, and, you know, a little bit of fashion and art and design into that, Let's shoot it with a talent. Let's find a location that's you know got some glitz and glamour to it. Uh, lighting would be similar, but let's make everything gold, and including what the dress that she's wearing, which is basically gold sequins, and uh, create a series of images that kind of give you that feeling, again, it's back to emotions, of uh, class and style and design and fashion and all that kind of stuff wrapped into one. Um, so we found a location which is basically a high-end mall and this is like the outdoor area of it. Um, the talent is wearing a gold sequin dress, uh, which is uh, pretty much obvious of what it stands for. And uh, you get a lot of lighting here that's already very warm because the lighting here is, if you look here, um, tungsten, and it's lots of them, which is great because I particularly chose this spot here because it reflects off the car as little highlights. And it makes the car kind of shine like a jewel. And that kind of has a connection to her dress. So it, it all kind of plays well with each other. And that's the series here. So that's how I use color to convey this type of emotion. Uh, and it will be different for another car with a different type of audience. So this rabbit hole goes quite deep, as you can see. I don't want to go all the way in because this video will last forever. But this, I hope, gives you a good 
new direction in thinking about how to use color for your car photography and color photography in general. Again, if you like this video, please subscribe to see more. Thanks so much, and I'll see you again soon.